Now let's talk about advanced policies. And I'm going to put a link for this page of the resources of this lecture. And let's talk about control flow. And as you can see here, it's more like if, else, or switch condition in normal programming language, where you specify different Boolean expressions. And based on the evaluation of those expressions, it's going to control the execution flow of our policy. Let's go ahead and have a look at the example here. Assume we have a variable here called isMobile, and it gets the value from request headers. And based on the value of isMobile, if it's true, we are going to set a query parameter to be true. And if the value of isMobile is false, we are going to set query string parameter mobile to false. Now let's talk about forward request. When we receive a request, it's being forwarded to the backend service for processing. And what this policy does, it's going to specify a timeout in seconds for the backend service to be able to process and respond back to our request. So let's have a look at example here. Assume that we have specified this policy at the global level, right? We specify the timeout for 60 seconds. Notes here that it needs to specify in the backend tag, not in inbound or outbound, because it's something that affects the backend services. Now, if we look at the operation level, you'll see that we will not have to specify the same timeout here. And the reason for this because policy is using inheritance, and the lower level policies are going to inherit the specifications we defined for the higher level policies. So for this policy, we specified it for all APIs. And this policy is scoped for the operation level. However, it's going to use the 60 seconds timeout that we specified in the higher scope. Even though the timeout is not specified at the operation level explicitly. Now let's talk about limit concurrency. And it's a way to specify the maximum requests we can get at any time. And if we are getting more requests than that, we are going to respond with 4 to 9 too many requests status code. Now let's talk about log to event hub, and it's a policy that allows us to send the HTTP requests or responses to the event hub for processing. And we get to specify what data exactly we want to send there for processing. We can specify the date and time and the service and IP address of the request. And we are going to cover this in more detail in the monitoring section. Now let's talk about mock response, and we have already talked about it in the previous lectures, where you get to specify the status code that you want to mock in addition to the content type. Now let's talk about retry policy, which is taking a Boolean expression for evaluation, and as long as the expression is true and the number of retry attempts didn't hit, it's going to retry the execution. As you can see here, the Boolean expression is the status code equal 500 and the count of retrials is less than 10. Now let's talk about return response. And what it does, it breaks the pipeline execution and return either a default or a custom response. The default one is 200 with no body, however you can specify a custom response code as well. Now let's have a look at send one way request. And as it says, it's a sending a request without expecting any response back. And let's have a look at this example, and it will make more sense. As long as we are receiving a status code more than 500, we want to send a one-way message to Slack, so we can get to notify the team members that are responsible for this API. Now let's talk about send request. This is where you specify the URL that you want to send or forward the request to it. And it needs to be fulfilled within the specified timeout. As you see in this example here, the timeout is 20 seconds, and this is the URL that we want to send the request to. Now, going to set HTTP proxy. This is where we specify a proxy to forward requests via HTTP proxy. HTTPS are not supported. And you need to specify the username and password in this policy. And look at these three setters. You get to set the request method 
as we see in here, you can specify what method you want your request to apply. And also you can set the status code of your request. For example, this one setting 401 for certain condition. And also you can set a variable for your policy to be used. For example, here we created a variable called is mobile and it's going to take the value from request header. Then we have trace policy here, which helps you to inspect what might be happening in your API and add more information to the trace tab. And we are going to see this in a minute. And finally, we have the wait policy, whether you specify either waiting for all of these conditions to be met or just anyone to be met. Now let's go back to the API management and go to the get jobs operation. And let's see how we can add a trace for this operation. So let's go ahead and add output trace information. This is not the right syntax. So let's paste this line and I'm going to leave everything to the default except these uh, context variables here. I'm going to say this is my trace, for example. And let's go ahead and save this. Now let's test get jobs operation. And let's go to trace. Let's search for trace. As you can see here, we have added this line in the trace to help us getting more information about either the request or response. That's it for this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it and please feel free to join me in the next lecture.